What's up? Would it be weird if I just um, just stood up here silently for a minute? Is that all right with you? <laughs> Camera's greatness. I'm not. I'm not trying to be silent. It's not. It's not. It's not like an attempt. It's just I feel silent, but I also feel a pressure to speak. <laughs> Uh, it's just, I mean, I know I'm supposed to speak, right? Like, it's, it's Wednesday at 7 p.m. at the Arab American National Museum, and we're all here. And, of course, it's incumbent upon me to say something. But um, I feel silent. I feel quiet. I feel um, still. It's a strange feeling. I'm not used to it. I'm used to things being busy all the time. I'm used to always having something to say, always having something to share, but uh, I, I, I don't. <laughs> it doesn't mean I'm not going to say something. I mean, I, you know, I still have to fill the time and, and, and talk to you about something. But uh, it's also strange at the same time that I feel pressure to say something. I mean, I know, I know all of you. I, we, all, we all know each other. <laughs> like, you're not going to make me say anything, you know? Or you are, I don't know. <laughs> we feel pressured to speak, address, point out all the time. There's always something to say. There's always a stand to take. There's always um, a message to be delivered. But what happens when you get the message? Let's say you get the message. Let's say, like, let's say there is an answer to the secret of life, and you figure it out. Okay, then what? I think a lot about um, the Zen Buddhists. They, um, they, they do this thing, I don't know, I, I, it's very hard to describe Zen, but it's, it goes something like this. Basically, life is a big prank. It's a practical joke. And once you get the joke, all of life makes sense, all of it. Suffering makes sense, life and death makes sense, heaven and earth makes sense. Everything adds up, all the relationships you've ever had, why the people in your life, how they got in there, where they went, why it ended out this way and didn't end this way. Every disappointment and success, and it all makes sense in the end, if just you can snap out of it. So what they do is they try to trick you out of thinking. They try to trick you out of it because apparently thinking is what's causing the problem. So I'll give you a couple of examples of um, the kind of tricks they like to play to snap us out of it. So you'll, you have one, one trick, they call them koans. They're actually like little poems, so they call them koans. And there's this trick where they try to say something that stumps your thinking. Like what's the sound of one hand clapping? You know? <laughs> Or there's one, this one never made sense to me. It never made sense to me. This is the most famous like koan. It's like this Japanese Zen um, prank, I guess. There's a story that there was this young uh, monk who was trying to become enlightened. So he went to his master and his master said, sit, sit. That's all you got to do, just sit. So he sat. He sat for hours and they sat for days and they sat for weeks and months and years and he just kept sitting and nothing happened. So finally he snapped. And he went to his master and he said, you've ordered me to sit and do nothing, and I've been doing that and I'm not enlightened. But at that time they were having lunch, so they were eating. So the master says to him, have you finished your soup? And he says, yes. And the master says, then you better go wash your bowl. And the man was instantly enlightened. That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't understand. <laughs> but apparently, the Zen Buddhists say that when you get that joke, you've understood the secret of life. I, I don't get it. I don't get the one with the one hand clapping either. It doesn't. But I think about them. The only feeling I get is when I hear those things, I go silent. That's, that's one thing I do notice. That if I'm... When I hear a Zen koan, I go silent. 
The Muslims would call this something like an ayah. So the Quran, ayah in the Quran, right? So let's say you have uh, verses. In, in English, we call them verses. But in Arabic, the term is a little closer to, it's almost closer to like evidence. Al ayah. An ayah is like a piece of evidence. And the idea is that if you keep reading, you keep reading, you keep meditating on the verses of the Quran, then eventually something will click. One of these verses, these ayahs, will hit you and it will explain the meaning of life. It's very similar in effect to the koan. So for example, let's take the, the most common, uh, commonly read chapter in the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha, maybe the first verse, right? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Apparently that is a secret to life. If somehow you can figure out what Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen means in your personal life, you will become enlightened, as they say. And I find that when I listen to Quran, when I hear it recited, I fall into silence. I think there's a secret to silence. Which is why, although I feel pressured to speak, at the same time, I feel like when I get a chance, I want to sit with it and I want to explore it a little further because there's something going on there. And that's what I wanted to say about silence. <laughs> I promised to talk about, I told Wissam, make some noise for Wissam Sharifuddin, please. Wissam recording history every, every month here at the Arab American National Museum. And my man Hussam also, you're the man Hussam. I have yet to sit with Hussam and like have coffee with him, which I've been dying to do, so I'll do that at some point. I, I told them I was going to talk about my childhood crushes, so I will, I'll sprinkle that in somewhere. But for now, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Ali Al-Aridi. I'm very, very honored to bring him to the stage. Ali, come on up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ali Al-Aridi.